fried liver attack. One of the most aggressive and fun openings to play that you need to know whether you're playing for white or for black. It's super easy to learn and in today's video we're going to go over the very basics of this attack, some basic ideas to defend and then an example game by the legendary Paul Morphy and his father. In the game Paul Morphy will actually give away a free rook from the starting position and still win the game using the fried liver attack. Today's lesson is lots of fun, very easy to learn, so stay tuned and watch to the end and watch that example game by Paul Morphy and his dad. Lots of fun chess ahead. Alright, let's jump right into it. We have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop c4. This is called the Italian opening with e4, knight f3, and bishop c4. It's a great way for white to develop their pieces, get ready to castle the king, and attack the center squares. Black plays knight f6, which is also a very good move, although it does block the queen from attacking the g5 square. This gives white the opportunity to now jump the knight to g5 and attack the f7 square. This is called the knight attack and black needs to stop this attack somehow. Can you find the best way for black to stop the attack now on f7? The move is pawn d5. This blocks the bishop from communicating with the f7 square. Very good. Now we'll go over all of the mistakes that white and black can play in just a moment, but for now let's get into that ideal position or fried liver attack and then see what are some of the ideas from there and then we'll go back and look at some of the mistakes that can be played. So here pawn takes and now knight takes and this leads white to sacrifice the knight on f7, getting a fork, not a spoon, against the queen and the rook. This forces the black king to capture on f7, which puts this king in this diagonal. And that places this knight in an absolute or permanent pin. Whenever you have an opponent's piece that's pinned, that means it can't move, you should put pressure on pinned piece or pp on pp. It's a good way to remember to attack the piece that's always pinned. Here, queen f3 is attacking the king and also attacking the pinned knight. We're also attacking it with the bishop, and again, this sort of creates a very powerful attack against the black king. Now black has to figure out what to do. There's only one move. If black makes any other move, you're going to capture uh, the knight with your bishop. Your opponent must play king e6. Any other move, bishop captures the knight. So we have king e6, which helps to defend this knight. But the problem is the king is so exposed in the center of the board. So here we're going to continue attacking by putting pressure on the knight. The move is knight c3. And now we have three attackers against this knight. Black only has two defenders. So black will typically bring the knight either to the b4 square or the e7 square. We'll go over these a little bit later on. For today, we're going to go over the basic ideas of this attack and how we got there. So let's go again. We've got e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and black plays knight to f6, which is fine, but now we can play knight g5. Black plays d5. Very good. Now it's white to play. A common mistake for white here is to take the pawn with the bishop. This is not a very good move, since now black can capture you, and if you capture back, then the black uh, queen will capture the knight and aim down on the g2 square and the rook after that. Let's take a look. Queen captures the knight, pawn captures the knight, queen captures g2, and now the rook runs for its life. Bishop goes to h3, and now we have a battery here, that's when two pieces are protecting one another, and the queen wants to take on f1 and say checkmate. So queen must go to e2 and defend, and now after queen captures c6, black is considerably better. So whenever you come to this position, you must capture this pawn with your pawn as well. Now it's black to play, and the best move for black is knight goes to a5. This will threaten the bishop and force the bishop to move. Typically, the bishop will go to b5 and deliver a check. The pawn blocks by going to c6, and now pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and bishop usually runs back to d3 here, making a little bit of a defense square for the knight to retreat to if black plays pawn h6. So now knight can go to e4, knight takes, and bishop takes. And this is slightly better for white, but it's kind of like an even game here. Black has some, uh, uh, some compensation for the extra pawn, and white has the extra pawn. So it's kind of a balanced game. I would still prefer to be white here, but it's still a good game all around. So let's go back here and see what happens after pawn takes. 
Now, let's say knight takes. Here it's white to play, and knight, uh, knight captures on f7, going in for that fried liver attack. After the king takes, the idea of this is to say check with your queen, attacking the knight on d5 and also attacking the king. When the king runs away, let's say he doesn't go to e6, which is the only square that he can go to. Let's say he runs to a square like g8. Well, this just leads to mate. Bishop captures, and if the queen takes, we take back. And if the bishop blocks, then we checkmate like this. If the queen takes, then again, it just leads to another checkmate like this. So black will be doomed. Okay, so the king can never run to g8 since that's a poison square now. And any other square that the king runs to, it doesn't matter where it runs to, just take your bishop and capture on d5. A common question is, what about if the queen blocks? Again, like I said, any other move than the king going to e6, then the answer is bishop takes on d5. And again, you're just winning here. You're, you're just ahead now, and your opponent's king can't castle, and you're up by uh, one pawn as well. Very good. So let's go back. What's the idea after the king takes? Queen ta uh, goes to f3 check. King must be exposed and come over to the e6 square. Now we have knight to c3 putting on some pressure. And now from here, there are tons of ways that the game can continue uh, after black chooses to go either to knight b4 or knight to e7. Now, commonly knight b4 is played, and I've seen a lot of people castle their king here or even play moves like pawn a3 uh, and provoking the knight to capture on c2. My answer to this is usually quite simple. I like to play uh, king goes to d1 with the idea of rook comes to e1 and pawn d4. So this is a very good way for you to continue your attack against your opponent's king. We'll go over all of these uh, different scenarios in later episodes and later videos. So that's going to come up very soon. But for now, let's go over Paul Morphy's game and see how he utilized this attack. All right, now let's take a quick look at a game between the legendary Paul Morphy, who played for the White Pieces, against his own father, Alonzo Morphy. As you've already noticed, Paul Morphy is missing a rook over here. That's because Paul Morphy was such an extraordinary player, he would often give away things like rooks, knights, bishops, all for the sake of balancing the game a little bit. This is called peace odds, and some very strong players sometimes would do that. Even now, they'll do it with time odds, where you might get, say, 5-10 minutes on your clock, and they would only get 1 or 2 minutes on theirs. This just helps to balance the game. As Bobby Fischer once put it, Paul Morphy was likely the most accurate player who ever lived. Now, this is quite the compliment coming from a guy like Bobby Fischer, who normally didn't hand out too many pleasant compliments. Now, here we go. In the game, we have pawn e4, pawn e5, knight to f3, knight c6, and bishop c4. This is the Italian opening. Alonzo Morphy played knight to f6, which is a good move, but it does block the queen from defending the g5 square. So, Paul Morphy brought the knight to g5. This is the knight attack. Very good. Now, the correct move here is pawn d5, and that's what Alonzo Morphy played. But let's take just a quick second and look at some of the big mistakes that some players sometimes play here. Uh, queen e7 is a very common error here. Bishop will take on f7 check, and if queen takes, knight takes, king takes, and of course, white has come up very well in that exchange. And this would be winning in your games. So in this position, if bishop takes, what if the king runs away in your own games? Then bishop goes back to b3, and again, you're threatening f7, creating a fork threat, and you're up one pawn, and the king had to move. Now, in this game, of course, that won't be the case, because Paul Morphy has given away a free rook, so he needs a little bit more than just a pawn. Okay, what else could uh, black possibly play that would be disastrous? Well, knight goes to e7 would be the worst thing that you could do. Now it's checkmate on f7 since the king is now smothered in place and can't move anywhere because he's trapped around his own pieces. Now, what about if bishop goes to e7? That's equally bad or very close to it. Knight takes f7 and now the queen is smothered and she can't move anywhere because she's smothered around her own pieces. So let's continue. The correct move would be pawn to d5. And in the game, Paul Morphy captured. Alonzo Morphy captured back, allowing Paul Morphy to play the fried liver attack. Now Alonzo Morphy has to take since the knight is attacking the queen and the rook. So once the king comes outside, it's exposed and underneath this diagonal, which means the knight is now permanently pinned. That means we cannot move the knight or black cannot move the knight. Otherwise, it'll be a check against the king. So what should you do against your opponent once you've pinned them? You should apply pressure. 
Put pressure on pin piece. PP on PP. So queen goes to F3. Now we've applied this pressure while attacking the king, attacking the knight, and then we're chasing around our opponent's king in pieces. If our opponent does anything other than king e6, so any other move, bishop takes d5. We'll go over some of those possibilities later. Uh, king goes to e6 in the game, which helps to defend the d5 square. So now the knight is still pinned. It still can't move. So what should we do? Put more pressure. Knight goes to c3. Now it's black to play. Most commonly, the knight will go to b4, which defends his own knight on d5, or possibly to e7. We'll go through this again in our next video. But for now, let's go over what happened in the game, which was knight d4. Now it's Paul Morphy to play, and since there are three attackers on the d5 uh, knight, now white captured with the bishop. Queen cannot take back, since our queen can capture and our knight is defending, so king moved over to d6. Now it's Paul Morphy to play, and he played queen f7. This is a really cool threat. Now let's say black plays a horrible move like pawn h6. Can you find checkmate in one? The move is knight goes to e4, checkmate. The king has nowhere to go since the knight is covering up the c5 square attacking and the bishop's attacking these squares, queen's attacking back and defending. So all of these squares are now covered and the black king is mated. Okay, so after queen goes to f7, Alonzo Morphy played, bishop goes to e6, and now Paul Morphy to play and he captured. Now Alonzo Morphy captures back with the knight and Paul Morphy still plays knight to e4, checking the king. The king has nowhere good to go and so he plays down to d5. If he goes over to c6, queen still captures and we're still checking. So in the game that didn't happen, we have king goes down to d5. Now it's white to play and white plays pawn c4, attacking the king and the king captures the knight. Now Paul Morphy to play, what would you play? The move is queen captures. Now the king cannot come outside. As you can tell, the king is now in white's territory. So Paul Morphy has his own, uh, has his uh, opponent's king, his father's king, in his own territory. And now he can have a much easier time attacking it, even with just the queen. But it's much easier with more pieces. Thankfully, we have pawns and a bishop. So in this game, it's black to play. And now Alonzo Morphy makes a very questionable move. Queen goes to d4. Now the king is truly trapped with very few squares to go to, so Paul Morphy takes advantage right away, playing the most accurate move. Queen goes to g4, checking the king. King must go down to d3, and again, a forced move now. Queen goes to e2, forcing the king down to c2, and now a discovered check. Can you find it? Move the pawn to deliver the check. So pawn goes to d3. Queen checks the king. King must take the bishop, and now white to play. Checkmate in one. A very fancy way to do it. Did you see it? Castle kingside, checkmate. Another wonderful game by the legendary Paul Morphy utilizing this fried liver attack. Now we're going to go over this again uh, in a couple of more uh, episodes. So there's going to be a little bit more that we're going to cover and some more example games that we're going to go through. So don't worry if you have any questions right now, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to every single question and we will release another video about this very, sh uh, very soon. So I want to thank you all very much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please subscribe, uh, like the video and comment below for any questions uh, or comments that you might have. Thank you so much again. I can't wait to see you all again next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for watching today's video. If you like the video, please share with your friends and family. And please remember to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps the channel. Until next time, please remember to practice and have fun.